You can see all links and common questions associated with this video by going to the right and clicking more info. You can help support this channel by rating and commenting on the video. Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about XAMPP. It's basically a server. It installs Apache PHP, MySQL, Perl, and even FileZilla in a simple installer. You don't have to configure anything, and yes, it's free. Uh, it's just a simple server. You run the installer and you have a server on your computer. Well, I would previously talked about it in my PHP tutorial, but people seem to have problems. So in this video, I'll do a guided install and maybe show you a few examples. Okay, so let's install it. I'm just going to Google search, click the first link, and you can select from different language options at the top of the page. If I scroll down a bit, I can see the downloads, Linux, Windows, Mac, or Solaris. I'm going to select Windows and then click the version, click the installer, and now I can get a download link. Now I've already downloaded it, so let's just run it. So I run, and here we go with the installer. It has Dutch, English, and Japanese. English, next. I'm just going to select X for laziness as my destination folder. A desktop icon and a folder in the startup menu. I'll just say desktop icon. Now here's the important stuff. Apache is your web server, MySQL is your database, and FileZilla is an FTP server. I'm just going to install Apache and MySQL. Uh, these are the services, so these will start up whenever you start up your computer. And I'll click install. And we're installing. Now just wait. Okay, skipping ahead a bit, it says setup was completed successfully. Congratulations, the installation was successful. Start the XAMPP control panel now. I'll say yes, and it'll open the XAMPP control panel here. If I go down, you can see Apache and MySQL are running. And if I click admin, you can see the page that's hosted on this server because I installed XAMPP on it. So this is on my local host. This is my computer serving this page. Uh, and I can actually modify this page. By default, it's this thing. And if you, we click English, it'll say, Welcome to XAMPP. Congratulations, you have successfully installed it. Let's set it up to something custom. Now, I installed it in the directory X. You might have installed it in XAMPP. So I'll just click X. And actually, the websites are in htdocs. That's the name of the directory. As you can see, it says XAMPP slash splash, and in htdocs, we have a directory called XAMPP, and if I search splash, it'll jump to it, and it's right here. We also have a file named splash. And let's modify this file real quick. This has been modified. File save or control S. If I go back to this page and click F5, it says this has been modified. So as you can see, this is your server, and you can actually edit it however you want. Let's say you don't want to start on this XAMPP slash splash page. Let me close it. Let me go back to htdocs. And I'll only have one index. You can have it as PHP or HTML, whichever you prefer. I'll set it as PHP. And I'll double click it and I'll delete the code that's here and we'll say this is my custom page on localhost I'll control s to save or file save and then let's go to localhost and refresh this is my custom page on localhost there you go you have a server also if it doesn't show up for localhost uh, that has something to do with this, the host file on your computer, but you can also access it through 127.0.0.1, which is some kind of alias for the computer's home IP address. So it says, This is my custom page, and now you can practice your PHP too, or whatever you want to practice on your own, on your own web server. Echo, this is a test. And file save. And there it is. Okay, a few questions people might have. Can you send websites you make on this web server to a friend? Yes, but you don't want to send them localhost because that will point to their computer. Uh, you have to go to Google and say, what's my IP? And you'll get a site. It will tell you your IP. 
if uh, your friend can paste it into the location bar and access your site, then it worked. Otherwise, you may have a hardware or software router blocking you. You have to port forward port 80 in order to have it uh, go to your site. I really don't recommend a home web server as a primary host for your website. I mean, it's really great for testing and development. You can create something, modify it, and then just F5 or view it on localhost and you can see the changes. You don't have to upload to a web server. However, there are several disadvantages. For one, you have to keep your computer on all day long. Secondly, many people have dynamic IP addresses, which means your website location may change from day to day. And sometimes it's actually against your, your internet service provider's terms of service. So it's actually better just to get a free web host, and there are, they do exist. There are several that are pretty decent. If you go to Google and type Jimmy R Web Hosting, uh, you can see a list of web hosting companies I've compiled. This is my dedicated server. This is where my website is hosted at. It's pretty expensive though. If you want a free host, there's Tripod, Google Pages, GeoCities, FreeWebs. Uh, Tripod has limited support for PHP, I think, too. There's also free hosts with advanced features, and I actually really liked Award Space. Now, many of these sites actually put ads on your website. So they do give you free hosting, but in exchange they put their stupid ads on it. But it's not horribly bad uh, for testing. If you've never had a website before, it's a perfect place to practice. They give you plenty of bandwidth and stuff. If you want free domains, .com, .net, .org don't exist, sorry. Usually you're going to get a subdomain. Uh, if you want a .com, .net, or .org, you can go to GoDaddy, Yahoo, or any other site that sells domains and just register the domain with them. It's not that much money. It's like $9.99 a year or something. It's like going to buy a freaking pizza. So don't worry about the cost too much. Uh, for free, you can get co.nr.tk.zones.in and no IP. Uh, these are some free domain extensions you can get, like mysite.tk or something. They usually come with a catch, but in any case, they're free. Also, there's a dedicated or shared hosting. If you want something a little better with MySQL, PHP, and no ads, then sorry, but you're usually going to have to pay. And here's the list of servers I recommend. It's not that much again. It's like $7 a month, so it's really no big deal. Unless you get a dedicated server, which is like 150 DreamHost, Lunar Pages, one in one and Hosts. There's several really decent servers that are pretty inexpensive. So don't think it's really out of your range. Okay, let me backtrack to the XAMPP control panel real quick. And let's talk about MySQL. If I click this admin button, the first time it opens, it should prompt you for a username and password. If you want to set one, go ahead. I really recommend it if uh, you're on a shared network or you don't have some kind of firewall. Uh, if you want to easily modify MySQL stuff, you can go to the directory where you installed XAMPP. For me, it's X. And move PHP my admin into uh, htdocs. PHP my admin is an easy PHP interface to interact with MySQL and I can go to any database or create a database and I can make SQL statements. This is perfect if you want to go through MySQL tutorials because you can just do it through this form. Uh, the traditional way is to go directly by command line. Let me go to the folder I installed XAMPP in. I'm going to go to MySQL. I'm going to go to bin and I'm just going to copy this. Now I'm going to go to Start Run or Windows Key R to open the, the Run prompt and type CMD. I'll type CD and then the directory. And now I'm in the directory and now I can say MySQL dash the user is root or whichever user you entered. If you have a password type dash P and I'm in MySQL. Now I can start the tutorials, I can start editing, modifying, creating, whatever I want to do. Okay, let's talk about PHP real quick. Your PHP uh, files are located wherever you installed XAMPP in a directory called conveniently PHP. Uh, from here you can also use PHP from the command line. If I say let's make a new file, 
foo.php and let's edit it and I'll say echo whoops echo hello I'll go to file save or control s and then I'll say uh, let me exit mysql and then I'll go to cd slash x slash php php foo.php and now I have just run PHP from the command line. So that's another option. Also, if you want to edit your PHP.ini, it's not in the PHP directory. Well, it is, but that's actually a fake one. This is an evil fake. It's a forgery. It's bad. It's not the real one. You want to go back to the XA XAMPP directory and go to Apache, go to bin, and for some reason, uh, there's a php.ini in this folder and this is the one you want to rely on. Now that I'm in the Apache directory anyway, let me show you where the Apache configuration file is. It's right here in the conf and it's uh, http.conf. So if you want to configure Apache to do whatever you want, you can also edit it here. You can set up your own little subdomains or what have you. Okay, that concludes the XAMPP tutorial. If you want to learn how to set up your own website with HTML and CSS with no prior knowledge needed or software, just search YouTube for JimmyR.com HTML tutorial. If you want the basics of PHP programming, search JimmyR.com PHP tutorial. Anyways, thanks for listening. You can see a full list of my videos by going to youtube.jimmyr.com. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Anyways, thanks for listening. <laughs>